Welcome to the RSGB High Altitude Balloon Competition. My name is Fraser, MM0EFI, and today I'm going to tell you how you can take part and what's involved. This competition is sponsored by Moonraker and supported by the RSGB Legacy Fund. And it is part of National Coding Week. There's no direct coding involved in this project, but it's a great way to brush up old skills if you haven't been near, near a computer for a while or maybe to learn something new. There will be a step-by-step -step guide in this video which also supports this manual. Everything I talk about, be it equipment or software or hardware, there will be full links in the description for this video. Anyone can take part, but you will have to be an RSGB individual member or affiliated club member to be eligible for the competition. Moonraker have put up two £200 prizes, one for the individual and one for the club, and the results will be announced at the RSGB convention in October. You can find everything you need at the web link rsgb.org forward slash Laura dash balloon link in the description. How can you take part then? Well, you'll need a tracker. You can use an existing one if you already have a LoRa tracker that works on the 70 centimeters band. This here is a T-beam type that I've had for, for over a year in a 3D printed case. Uh, this one here is a Heltec tracker mounted inside a nice little 3D case. This one's available from the SOTA shop, the Summits on the Air shop. If you need to buy one, um, the two places that are recommended are the actual Heltec store or on AliExpress, making sure that you buy the 433 MHz version, not the 500 or not the, the 800 mesh-tastic version. RSGB director Ben Lloyd will be releasing a high altitude balloon, so a weather type balloon, and that will have a uh, LoRa repeater attached to the bottom of it. And the idea is that you use your tracker to try and open the repeater. The uplink is 439.850 megahertz, and the idea is that you open the repeater using your tracker from as far away as possible. And the repeater if you can open it, will then retransmit your LoRa packet on a downlink frequency of 433.850 MHz to specially set up event eye gates that are going to be dotted around the country. This is one of them here. These are connected to the internet and after the event, all the data will be combed through to see who has the furthest packet transmitted to the balloon. The balloon's expected to go up to 90,000 feet before it will pop and when it's at that height it should be visible to RF right across the country. You may be thinking why should I invest money on something like this that might cost me 20 or 30 pounds or, or more if I buy a case for a one-day event. Well not to worry your tracker can be reprogrammed to the normal amateur LoRa frequencies after the event and the RSGB will release instructions on how to do that. If you can manage to program it for this you'll easily manage to reprogram it after the event and then you can use it pedestrian mobile in your car climbing hills on a boat whatever you want to do with it. Right let's get on to getting the software onto the tracker board. So in order to do that first of all you're going to need Assuming you're using a PC, um, download a program called Virtual Studio Code from the Microsoft Store. It's free and dead easy to set up, so let's do that now. Okay, I've opened the web page, code.visualstudio.com, and we can see here there is a Download for Windows button, so we'll click on that, and the download has started. Now that we've got that downloaded, we can click on the exe file here. Accept to the terms. And quite happy for all of those at the minute. Hit the install button. Now that we have 
uh, VSC installed, we can click on the extension button here and we want to search for the extension platformio.ide And there we go, we install that the little alien head and off he goes. That's us finished with that for now, so let's go back to our web browser and open the specific GitHub page um, link in the manual and also in the description and this is going to give us the custom firmware we need for the device. So we've got the page open, we click on code and we want to get the latest copy of the code and download the zip. Now open um, your file manager and if like me you just use the generic downloads folder you will see that the information is all in there. If we right click on that file and extract all it will put it in the folder downloads RSGB Harry Ab Tracker and I'm happy to just have that in there. And there we go, that's done. Right, let's get back into the VSC app and if I click on the little um, wasp head or alien I want to pick a folder here and it's the RSGB Tracker, yes. And we'll let VSC do its stuff. It's going to take a little while for this to uh, import and build this, so be patient. So while we've been away and had a cup of tea and a biscuit, hopefully you've come back to find that your project is compiled 100% and you're good to go to the next phase. Now I've enlarged the screen here so we can see it full size. If we move down to line 12, I am already set up for a Heltec underscore wireless underscore tracker. If you are using a different advice, you would have to change that potentially to um, your T-Beam version 1.2 or, or something similar. But look at the bottom of the screen here to the white tick. That is what we are going to do next to compile the software for the tracker board. You'll know it's worked if you see the word success written several times at the bottom of the screen. Okay, if you've got this far, well done. You've done all the hard work. Now it's time to grab the board, plug it in and uh, get this thing up and running. So this is where our little Heltec device comes in. Take the board out, you can see it's got a, a USB socket in one end of it. We're going to plug that into the computer and see what it does. Well, I've plugged the lower board into the computer now, so I'll go down to my search bar at the bottom and select Device Manager. Get that opened, and if we look at our ports and open that up, we can see that it's a USB serial device COM6 on this device. Um, now in the instruction it does suggest you unplug and replug it and that way it will disappear off that list and come back on so you can be certain of the COM port but it's quite clear here it's the only serial device that's connected to my PC so COM6 it is. Well, let's open VSC again. Now we've got to upload the software that we created along with a configuration file. So first of all to upload the software we go back down to where the white tick was at the bottom of the screen and if you can see the right facing white arrow next to it that is the upload button which will upload your software to the serial device. Sometimes it doesn't work and I've had this um, experience in the past before. <clears throat> if it doesn't, try it again and it should work. 46 seconds later and we can see on my screen that I have got the good old success items at the bottom there highlighted in green. So it's all good. So still 
in the VSC program, we need to go up to the data menu on the left hand side here and we open that up and if we click on that tracker.conf.json, uh, that's the configuration file for our device and we can see in here just looking at the first line you know the call sign is blank now we can edit that in here but what we really should do to make our life easy is just upload it to the device and then we can actually edit it later on using um, a web based editor with a, a much easier to use uh, graphical user interface I've done them on here in the past but uh, let's stick with the program and say what it says and do what it says in the instructions here in the manual so we'll go down to the little um, alien we click on him and now we have to look for our device on this list here and we can see there are a list of various different companies and there are a list of Heltec boards there with the Heltec wireless tracker selected and if I scroll down there's a menu opens within that and I want to select the upload file system image and click on that and off it goes that took just 13 seconds and we can see that we have the success lights <laughs> green lights at the bottom of the screen and I can just press any key in that little window to, to close it we just need to customize the configuration file so let's do that now now I've unplugged the little tracker board and plugged it back in again and if you see if I open my Wi-Fi settings on my computer there is a LoRa tracker access point that the little uh, device is generating it's asking for a password and the password is one two three four five six seven eight nine zero so if I open a new tab on my browser and I put in the IP address 192.168.4.1 and that's me straight into the configuration page for the device so let's go back to the top of this I want to change the call sign to MM0EFI um, we don't want to change any of this I'm not going to add a comment because the longer the packet that you transmit the less chance it has of getting through in under weak signal conditions so the shorter packet the longer it's transmitting each symbol isn't it so you've got a better chance of getting your packet picked up so keep your packets as short as possible I shouldn't be giving tips away should I um, so we'll leave the other two blank we're only going to have one call sign in here um, I definitely don't want to change the frequency because that's what's been agreed for the event the spread factor is 12 and the coding rate is 5 these are all stipulated as part of the specifications for this event so I'm quite happy with that I'm not going to bother with Bluetooth but if you want to you can and we'll just go right down to the bottom and um, we're not going to put a password in here we will just save that so that is basically the device rebooting when it reboots it will come up with that information on it and it will be fully functioning as your tracker for the event so that's us finished with the hardware and software let's have a look at antennas back at the bench now LoRa is good if you've been a user of 2 meters APRS which let's face it you can run on anything from 5 watts on a handheld to 50 watts on a mobile radio you will be absolutely astounded as to how far a LoRa packet can be received with a couple of hundred milliwatts um, previously there have been LoRa enabled balloons passing over the UK that have been launched from foreign countries and drifted around the world a couple of times and um, I've, I've managed to receive packets at my uh, eye gate on the side of the house with just a 70 centimetre dipole from almost the coast of Norway when they've been flying over the North Sea. This time the thing's potentially going to be 90,000 feet up. Certainly from here it's going to be 
three or four hundred miles away from my location. We need to give it every chance to get the signal to open up the repeater. This is what you get when you um, pretty much order any of these devices, be it a, a T-Beam or one of the Heltec boards. Um, it's not the best, you might want to try something a bit better. Uh, this is what you get on this, the tracker if you order the, the nice um, case um, and ready-built tracker that comes on the SOTA shop. This is what I've been using on my tracker when I've been hill walking and doing SOTA and it's simply um, one of these little uh, BNC to SMA connectors with some nitinol wire uh, soldered into it um, and it's covered in heat shrink. I've had packets received 80-90 kilometres away over hilly terrain using this and this, this T-beam tracker. So that, something like that, is dead easy to make. That would be an improvement. Of course, if you want to go big, then you're going to have to think about getting yourself a beam. There are lots of designs on the web. There are designs for tape measure beams, which um, was the first beam I ever made for, for two metres myself. It, it was great working in the garden. Be careful if you're thinking about taking something like that out onto a hillside or a, an open place because the wind can fold the the elements up pretty, pretty quickly. You might have an arrow antenna, which is the, the one people use for satellites, 2 metres and 70, you can use that. So the world is your oyster with antennas. Consider it part of the project. What you do in terms of antenna design is entirely up to you. In terms of your ability, if you want to try something new, try an experiment, stretch yourself a little bit if you've never made an antenna before or a simple beam, go for it. Whatever you decide to do with your board, your programming and your antenna, it's your waves, your skills and your moment. So you just make sure that you enjoy the RSGB high altitude balloon competition. Seven three.